Mr. Sendil Kumar, Deputy Program Manager, Jesse, founded by the United Nations ICD Task Force. He's here to give us an insight on teacher awareness and participation. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Sendil Kumar. I think uh, it's the last but uh, one session, if I'm right. So probably it's very difficult to hold on to your attention, especially the weekend, Saturday evening. So let, let's try to uh, be, uh, in fact, uh, there were few uh, repetitions. So therefore, I had to chop a few slides. So let me try to bring a bit of a global perspective uh, to the whole uh, the teacher development. We have been talking about uh, the uh, continuous professional development for a teacher. So having worked in corporate, having worked in one of the uh, largest uh, not-for-profit entity here in India with the Azim Premji Foundation, and taking that bit of experience to the globe and uh, also trying to bring something back here. And uh, so I'm here to probably bring in a bit of a global context. So let us look at slightly beyond what we are talking about ICT per se for the past two days. And uh, the whole world is moving towards building a knowledge society. Even if you look at any uh, country's vision document, uh, moving from agricultural economy, industrial economy to knowledge-based economy, wherein, of course, ICT plays a very important role, but still there are other elements like science, technology, innovation, research, skills development. And before that, I'll just give you a slight uh, brief on uh, where we come from as an entity, the Global E-Schools and Communities Initiative, which is uh, the United Nations ICT Task Force uh, founded entity during 2003 when Kofi Annan was the Secretary General, so this new division innovated. And we have been uh, part of UNICEF and UNESCO for some time, so then uh, now we are a standalone entity with the new ICT Task Force. And we, uh, work uh, predominantly in the space of building capacity, policy, strategic plan for uh, developing least developed countries. And when we started off our operations, we had uh, operations in three entities, uh, three continents like uh, Africa, of course in India. Very soon you will get to see the ICT in schools education policy, which we have been actively associated with MHRD by in developing uh, ICT in school education policy, uh, which has been done through very intensive multi-stakeholders representative. So you will see it very soon. Uh, the pre-final draft is approved and the, the final version going to be released uh, in next couple of weeks time. So you'll see that uh, ICT in school education policy very soon, which is going to be a guiding framework and document for many state government to really look at building the next five year or three year strategic plan for integrating technology into the education sector. And we implement a very interesting program, uh, which is uh, the leadership capacity building for knowledge society. If uh, the government system is keeping uh, the vision of building a knowledge society in many of the countries, what kind of education leaders, not only education leaders, the cross-cutting ministries, how they have to come together, like the Ministry of ICT, Higher Education, Science, Technology, Research, Ministry of Planning, Finance, so how they can come together and collaboratively work to build a knowledge society. So that's the capacity building program we are doing. So this program is a master's program, master's in ICT and leadership for building knowledge society. Uh, the course is accredited to Dublin City University of Ireland. So each of those participants will get master's from uh, DCU in Ireland. So, and all those learnings, what we uh, consolidate uh, from the country level, region, and global. So that's what we take it to the UN platform for advocacy and communication and integrating some of those policies into the uh, uh, country level document when if you are looking at the World Bank assistance or African Development or Asian Development Bank assistance to put in the strategy into action. So we help them to build the total cost of ownership for the whole country or state at a large scale, helping them to build this financial package. So, so that's the service area we do. And also we build uh, consistent research base and knowledge tools and products in the space of integrating ICT into education sector. So, so that's the brief about uh, where I come from. So can we look at to this, any guess what it is? It's a map, but it is related to something. Looks like hot. Few bulging hearts about to die. 
okay? Any guess? Is there any correlation? Definitely it's the world map, but something is plugged in here, therefore the map dimension completely changed. Somebody is, I think, here we go. Yes, actually the UN uh, Conference Trade and Development uh, conducted a large scale survey during 2007. And uh, here is the data when you plug in the world of knowledge people having. And uh, can you able to figure out where is India? There is a small yellow line here. That's where we stand. Here is the North America, Europe. You can look at the Africa, there is almost invisible. So this is what, if you hold the knowledge and innovation, that directly relates to what? The GDP, money. Both the graph looks very similar. If you have a knowledge and if you have innovations and you have money, but we are doing extremely well. Here, look at where is India, world of poverty. Still, you know, this is the statistics of 2007 by UN, uh, the trade and conference, but you know, when we get a new data, we possibly get a new uh, graph. So this is very important. So this is what we are really looking at. Uh, you know, the, uh, the recommendation came from one of the UN entities that unless the developing countries adopt policies to stimulate technological catch up with the rest of the world, they'll continue to fall behind. And wherein this uh, technology infrastructure is really, really contributing to build the knowledge and innovations. So this is the context setting in which I look at, but uh, the two days we have been intensively discussing about uh, definitely the great potential about ICT and ICT role in teaching, learning, administrating, uh, networking, collaborating, knowledge sharing. Still the major challenge is what we have is that, you know, how those challenges we can continue to address, how the technology can bring in large scale. Forget about one school islands of excellence, which always you can do it within your close control. Most of the school head and the school promoters here, you have an amazing level of control over what you are doing, which is practically manageable. Uh, relating to the S uh, SSASPD this morning was talking about, when you need to manage something like 50,000 schools, 153,000 teachers, look at the whole of India, 220 million children, 1.4 million schools, and 7 million teachers, if you need to transform, not reform, transform the whole sector, what is the scale and challenges we are really looking at? So this is the context, you know, how you can bring the technology to address this inclusive access. How you can bring in technology to contribute to uh, enhancing quality of education. So, how you bring this uh, complete data management? By the time when, when the government takes the midday meal statistics, you start doing the midday meal number of children in the school from June. You collect the data by December. You plan with the previous year data for the next year. And you don't have exact number of data in which you can plan at any point of time. So therefore, how you can actually automate complete data management process for a in, you know, very quality informed decision making? Increasingly the irrelevant uh, context of the education system. If, if you are really looking at uh, knowledge society, I can cite an example when I used to work with the Zim Premji Foundation, I used to closely work with uh, Wipro senior management uh, team. They go for a campus recruitment to get some of the cream of cream of uh, the freshers to the institute. Still they say that only 30% of them are employable. And the remaining need to go through intensive six or eight months training program. Imagine, so they go to the campus, select the first batch or cream of the students. Even those students would have probably got fantastic score to get into the best of the engineering institutions. When we look at uh, the employability of those creamy layer, imagine the remaining segment. And relatively low investment, of course, this is where the developing countries, least developing countries, really facing a major challenges like ICT, definitely it's a high investment, of course, compared to a decade ago. Now the cost of devices have come down drastically, but still it is very expensive when we look at 1.4 million schools, you need to take a computer or uh, whatever the form of technologies. 
How, with the limited resources, pedagogically optimize the design to deliver quality learning experience for a child or a student? So this is what we need to probably look at how the ICT can address the challenges of uh, the real education issues. And just uh, looking at, I just want to give you this. Uh, in 1900, uh, just about 112 years ago, one of uh, the civil engineers from America, John Elfred, predicted that uh, by 2000, we'll have this mobile, telephone, color photography, some of them. And uh, there was a poll in BBC recently. By 2112, if you want to predict, another 100 years down the line, the top 10 predictions came out. I don't know, so here uh, you can able to read or not. So, so we would be probably, so recently, this, this year, big thing, we, we got a news that is 7 billionth child born in the world. So we, it is estimated to be something like a 10 billion population in the world. And the top 10, possibly what can happen is that the people will not have enough food, therefore the sea and ocean will have to be recovered for cultivating, farming. So that's one top prediction. So that's the likelihood. They are rating about 10 out of 10. So when you have people and you, know, you cannot increase the land, obviously you need more food. So you need to recover the land somewhere and start cultivating. So that's the likelihood you can see possibility of. Uh, and uh, the, the communication, you know, so you can, uh, this will completely change. Maybe you can embed your chip here and you can start, you think others can relate to. And there are different processes. Uh, it, uh, yeah, of course, this, the whole presentation will be available. So you can glance through or you can go to BBC website, the uh, detail you can find it out. So some of those, you know, you can embed like a nano rabbit into your blood vessel, so which can take care of all your disease. And, uh, and also you can live whatever, you know, so no need to really, really look at your lifespan. There are techniques where the electronic gadgets will take care of your health automatically. So there are plenty of innovations coming out. Uh, they're predicting that uh, there are four, five major predictions in 1900 came through. It's a telephone, mobile phone, color photography, 